Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Joby. I'm here to discuss with you today some basic concepts of Gestalt psychology as applied to uh, being a musician, musical performance, musical teaching, creative practice. Um, one of the foundational elements of Gestalt psychology is living in the here and now, being in the moment, in the moment. Uh, this is something that all of us as musicians are well aware of, uh, the, the struggle to remain in the moment, the struggle to not be distracted, um, to serve the music, to become completely absorbed in the, uh, the, the tone, in the piece that we're performing, in the music that we're making, being com before working with others to be entirely enmeshed with them creatively, uh, responsively, emotionally, um, to be not only listening to the, the sounds we are producing, but to um, listen to the sounds that our, our uh, companions are producing as well. So this concept of the here and now is really remaining absorbed in this, this state. Uh, this is a phenomenological state that uh, I like to call kairos. It's the kairos state. This is not time as a chronological time, like on a watch, chronos time, but kairos time. This is uh, what we experience when we're playing when we're uh, in deep conversation, when we're, when we're playing, and I, I mean playing with a big P, playing like children, uh, when we're completely absorbed in what we're doing, and, well, we, we come out of this and say, wow, time flies. That's phenomenological time. That's the Kairos time. That's what I'm discussing. And we want to, uh, we want to tap into that Kairos, that presence, uh, the being in the moment. This is also known in uh, psych Western psychology terms as flow, the flow state. Athletes get into the flow state. Uh, the famous book on flow, Chick Sent Me High, uh, wrote, and this is a, an essential text for anyone to read, to getting into that flow state. And in Gestalt psychology, we, we call it the here and now. We're in the here and now. Uh, <laughs> So this is actually Fritz Perls took this directly from Buddhism, from Eastern philosophy, from that tradition of uh, being present in the moment. And today it's popularly uh, discussed as mindful meditation. So I would say the first step is the morning practice. This is just like practicing your instrument. You have to practice composure. You have to practice kairos. You practice being in the here and now. And th what this involves is the practice of doing this every morning. 20 minutes is adequate. Uh, you can go online and find your favorite mindfulness guide, got mindful meditation guide. There are apps for this. Uh, there's, there's, it's, it's really you have to find what works for you. But the, the important thing is that you do it every morning for 20 minutes. It's a good way to start your day. It's a good thing to teach your students. And you will definitely be able to call on this and in times of need while performing. Uh, it's just going to a, a, this, this, this place of complete presence in what you're doing. In Gestalt psychology, we have individuals and the clients <clears throat> come to us and we notice that they're often trying to escape from the here and now. Uh, whether you're with another person or with, your, with music or with yourself, you can avoid authentic contact, uh, making authentic contact with another person, making authentic contact with the present, with the music, making authentic contact with yourself. And there are many tricks that we, we all have to, uh, to get ourselves away from authentic contact. Um, two of the most basic 
ways to escape authentic contact with the here and now is fantasizing about the future or fantasizing about the past. We call this worry and we call this depression. <laughs> so when we're fantasizing about the future, we're trying to control what is to come, that's when we experience anxiety, worry. Um, anxiety is reducible to an attempt to control the future. Uh, it's a good thing to meditate on. Uh, depression, sadness, regret, dreariness, this is an attempt to control the past. When we are preoccupied with r ruminating on past events, past occurrences, we experience uh, heavy darkness. We experience regret and depression, down, being down. It's not being in the here and now. Uh, when we are fantasizing about what's yet to come, the future, we call this, uh, we feel a sense of anxiety because we're working on working out the possibilities, how to control this, how to control the future. And it's good to be aware of this. When you're feeling anxious, ask yourself, what am I, what is it that I'm trying to control in the future? Uh, what outcome am I trying to influence? When you're feeling down and sad and depressed, blue, ask yourself, what is it that I'm trying to control in the past? Being, living in the, we, we have general tendencies in our character types to live in the future, to live in the past. And in the Gestalt tradition, we make an attempt to break the habit, whatever our, our habit is, worry habit, regret habit, whatever our habit is. Um, maybe it's a, a swinging bath between trying to control the future and trying to uh, re control the past. Um Maybe it's a combination of depression and anxiety. <clears throat> Whatever this is, um, to come into contact with it and to be aware of our habit, uh, analyze your, your thoughts through the day and find out, discover for yourself whether you have a tendency to go to the controlling the future or controlling the past. And then in each of those times while you're in your daily life, um, come back to here and now. Come back to the to the present moment. Look around. Observe the world. A great uh, exercise is to walk with another person, a friend, a companion, and you don't speak. Uh, the only communication that takes place is pointing. So you walk on the path together and you point to a flower, you share that with that person. You're not speculating on what's going to happen with the flower. You're not ruminating on what happened to the flower. You're just pointing and bringing this to the attention. So that is being in the here and now, walking down the street and just observing everything, taking everything in, the, the, the vibrant beauty of things, the, the, the horrible, um, to decay of things, whatever it is, just be present and observing it, but don't, don't, don't try to ruminate on it. Uh, walking down the streets is wondering constantly how another person's going to receive you. That's trying to control the future. That's anxiety. Just be in the moment and look and see. And every time your mind starts to go towards that rumination for controlling the future or controlling the past, Consciously come back to the here and now. This is one of the most difficult things to do in the human condition. And anyone who practices Buddhist meditation, Buddhist psychology knows how difficult this is to remain in the here and now. Now, if you get into this practice throughout your day, you then apply it to the instrument, to sitting uh, with the instrument, uh, whether you're a violinist or a vocalist or a trombonist or whatever it is, pianist, um, when you're with the instrument, uh, you begin playing the music. You hear the beat. You hear the tempo. Chronos. 
you hear the the tempo, and then you begin playing the etude. And you remain completely focused on that tone that's happening. Now, the moment your mind goes to self-criticism, the moment your mind goes to, oh, I should have done this, or, oh, this, and yet you, you come back to just the tone. The moment you think, oh, so-and-so is going to be at the recital and think this, my teacher is going to teach, say this, you redirect yourself back to the music. This is completely serving the music. Now, when you're in front of an audience uh, or you're with your teacher and you start playing and you suddenly become, think, you start thinking about what are they thinking of me? They must think this. They must think that. At that moment, you have lost the, you've lost the, the, the plot. <laughs> the plot is to remain true to serving the music. The moment that you begin thinking about what's that person thinking of me? What's my teacher going to say? Am I any good? This is all trying to control the future. The only way to escape this is to firstly become aware of the habit. It's a habit. And it's not just when you're playing. That's habits extending through your entire daily life. Uh, become aware of the habit. And at the moment that it begins, redirect yourself back to the music, back to the, the beauty of the tone. So this is a very basic principle in Gestalt psychology that remaining in the here and now taken directly from uh, the Buddhist psychology tradition. Fritz Perls describes this wonderfully and his books um and also online there are, we have the the, the great uh, resource of many of his lectures uh, talks and uh, and group therapy sessions where he demonstrates his his uh, work you have to listen closely because of his accent the german accent is sometimes difficult to um you get used to it, though. You get used to it, and, and it becomes clear. So remaining in the here and now, becoming aware of when we stop focusing on playing the music and beautifully making and beautifully listening as we play, we're listening to others, and remain that, bring ourselves when we start to, when our mind starts to ruminate on what do so-and-so think, or I should have done this, or I all this negative stuff we begin to come distracted with. Uh, or if I had, if, you know, gone to this school, if I had practiced more, et cetera, all that stuff. Anxiety is trying to control the future. Depression, sadness, regret is trying to control the past. Both are ways to escape making contact in the present moment. I'm going to conclude this by just uh, giving one example from outside of music. I recall... Um, when I was training in psychotherapy, saying to a very one, it turns out one of the most insightful therapists that I ever learned from, and uh, I asked him, uh, "What do you do when you're with a client and suddenly you become conscious of eye contact and it becomes artificial? We've all been in the situation where eye contact suddenly becomes something that." comes to our awareness and we become self-conscious. And he looked at me and he said, the moment that you are focusing and become aware and are focusing on eye contact is the moment you've stopped listening to your client. Wow. Imagine that. What a lesson for musicians. The moment that we begin thinking about what does so-and-so think of me? Am I good enough? I'm not good enough. All these things, that's the moment we've stopped paying attention to the music. It's all about becoming here and now present and serving to make the music as beautiful as it can be. If you focus on making the music as beautiful as it can be, the rest evaporates. It's a practice you have to cultivate. You have to learn to um, prevent yourself to see the warning signs and not let yourself get too far and bring it right back to the music. Uh oh, I'm, oh, bring it right back to the music. And we master this by 
daily practice. Enjoy your self-exploration through music.